With most of us training at home now with minimal equipment, many people are concerned about losing muscle and strength. You may have been working hard in the gym the past few months and you do not want to lose the results you have gained so far. In this video, I will discuss three science-based training and nutrition tips that will help you maintain muscle. I don't want to run ahead of myself, but with intelligent home training and good nutrition, you can even make muscle growth progress. But before we dive into these practical training and nutrition tips, let's look into the research on muscle loss. Because contrary to popular belief, muscle loss does not occur quickly. A 2017 study found that when trained individuals take two weeks off from strength training, muscle size does not significantly decrease. Other research suggests that training breaks up to three weeks do not significantly influence muscle size. If we look at slightly longer term research, a 2017 study over a two month period found that beginner and intermediate trainees can maintain muscle training only once per week. So this is actually quite hopeful. People often think that if they miss two or three training sessions in a row that they will lose their gains. But based on the data, maintaining muscle is actually quite easy. As long as you maintain some activity and are not very restrictive with nutrition, you should be able to maintain all your muscle. Now, a question you may have if muscle loss only starts occurring after two or three weeks is why do you feel sometimes a bit smaller after just one week of not training? It is possible that you just psychologically feel smaller after taking a short training break, but your muscle glycogen levels also play a role. Muscle glycogen refers to the glucose stored in your muscles. The more you train, the more glucose you store in muscle since your muscles have greater energy demands. If you take a training break, these glycogen stores temporarily decrease and this also reduces water stores in your muscles. But once you start training again, your glycogen stores will increase and muscle size comes back to normal. As mentioned at the start of this video, I think you can even make progress during this period if you stay consistent with your training and nutrition. So there are three variables that I would like to discuss in this video in specific. These are your training, your calorie intake and protein intake. So we know that over at least a two month period, you don't need very advanced training to maintain muscle. But if we want to make progress, maintaining a similar amount of training stress as before the COVID-19 situation is a good aim. The difference now is that instead of a heavy barbell lift, you will have to do an advanced or weighted bodyweight exercise instead. For instance, instead of the bench press, you can do weighted push-ups with a backpack. Instead of barbell squats, you do split squats. With exercises like triceps pushdown, you can consider chair dips or bodyweight triceps extensions. I could present an entire workout program here, but I think it's more efficient if I do that in other videos. I already posted a bodyweight only home workout last week that you can check out. And soon I will also upload a video that discusses dumbbells only workouts. But in principle, doing between 3 to 5 home workouts that challenge your muscles is a good aim. And I would like to emphasize that these home workouts should be challenging. Say for instance you can do 100 bodyweight squats in a row. If you then go ahead and train the squat with 20 reps on your home workout, then you probably won't get much leg development out of this. As shown in a 2017 meta-analysis, if you train with higher reps, like many people do in home workouts, you need to reach complete muscle fatigue for the sets to be effective. On the screen, you can find a sample bodyweight home workout that you can try. For a complete routine, I suggest you check my last video. Next to training, it's of course also important to look into your nutrition. While training provides the stimulus for muscle growth, your nutrition makes sure that the fuel is there to make muscle growth happen. The most important variable when at least muscle maintenance is the goal is your calorie intake. Even if you have very effective home workouts, if you overly restrict your calories, muscle loss is more likely to happen. As shown in a 2011 study, being in a large calorie deficit increases the risk of muscle loss since your body has to tap into your muscle for energy. And especially now with the home workouts, it's sometimes more challenging to train your muscles effectively compared to when you have a complete gym setting. So I would advise against aggressive dieting during these times. If you are already relatively lean, I would aim to maintain your current body fat percentage by eating around maintenance calories. For most people with moderate activity, their maintenance calories will be around 15 calories per pound of your body weight. Eating around maintenance calories helps because now your body has the energy to support muscle protein synthesis and suppress muscle protein breakdown. But everyone's training goals are different. 
If you have a good amount of fat to lose and now have more time to make it happen because you're sitting at home more, then you can still maintain a calorie deficit. I would just suggest that this calorie deficit is more moderate, say around 15 to 25 percent. Aiming for around 11 to 13 calories per pound of your body weight is a good starting calorie range. Based on how you progress, you can tweak your calorie intake. Lastly, we have protein intake. Your muscles are actually made up of the molecule protein, in this case also known as muscle proteins. The amino acids you get from eating protein are used to build up your muscles via the process of muscle protein synthesis. So it is quite clear that consuming enough protein in a day is important for muscle growth. Research in dieting individuals supports this. Those with a low protein intake maintain less muscle than those with a higher protein intake. Typically, we've been told that consuming around 1 gram per pound of your body weight is a good aim for protein intake. If we look at the different studies on protein intake and muscle growth, we see that this isn't very off, but it is a bit on the high side. In 2017, a large meta-analysis about protein intake and muscle growth was published. The researchers found that a protein intake of at least 0.7 grams per pound of your total body weight is sufficient for maximizing muscle growth. So to sum up the practical takeaways of this video, aim to have between 3 to 5 strength-based home workouts per week, do not overly restrict your calories, and consume enough protein. If you do this, there really is no need to be concerned about muscle loss. In fact, if you keep progressing in your workouts, whether it be by doing more advanced bodyweight exercises or being able to do more weight or repetitions with the equipment you have available, then you can still make muscle growth progress during this period. So I hope this video helps ease the concerns some people have about muscle loss. I will continue to do my best to provide useful content throughout this entire pandemic. And if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up to support the channel. Also subscribe to stay updated on more useful content in the future. And I hope to see you in the next video.